All right, we're back with Quan, and I'm just showing you a little thing about his shoulder that's really important for people who are recovering from a shoulder injury like his, which is actually a fracture, but any type of rotator cuff or injury or any type of surgery reconstruction where the person's going back to doing raises or a shoulder press or bench press, chest press, and they've got a slight little problem with the control of their shoulder. So he's built up his strength, he's feeling a lot better, and now that he's returning to chest press, he's returning to push-ups, he hasn't yet got to shoulder press yet, he's starting to get some pain back into the lateral side of the shoulder, around his deltoid. Now that is a rotator cuff impingement pain, and he's getting it because his shoulder blade control is not as good as his left-hand side. Everything's strengthened up, He's just lacking a little bit of control and I want to show you that now before we go through the exercises that we're going to do to fix that and what he's going to he's going to use those exercises along with his shoulder pressing so he's going to return to shoulder pressing he's going to keep doing push-ups but he's got to add in these new exercises to make sure that the whole thing improves and he doesn't end up with a rotator cuff tear like a secondary injury and th listen this is how these injuries happen rotator cuff tears a lot of the time happen because of shoulder blade control issues and I'll show you that. So when he goes through abduction what's supposed to happen is the shoulder blade, imagine this is triangle, is supposed to stay stationary from when he goes from say zero up to 30 degrees, it's supposed to stay stationary and then it's supposed to abduct and rotate and come up. Now that happens on his left, okay, but on his right what happens is when he raises, instead of staying stationary, it lets go and goes inwards, which is a loss of control of his shoulder stability. And that just means when that shoulder blade goes in, he then has to pull it out. So by the time he gets way up here, it's not rotated abducted enough, which means he's going to get impingement. So let's have a look at that. So come on, slowly for me, thumbs out. I want you to go. Can you start that for me? I want you guys to watch this, okay, and watch the, the crease here, watch his shoulder blade come inwards when he goes outwards. So go outwards. There, can you see that? So as his shoulder blade out, so see, the, see this left one that's sitting there? This one, can you see that crease line on that curve? His right shoulder has come in, and if you keep going for me, it sort of stays in, and see this one's coming out? This one is still vertical, this one's coming out a little bit, keep going up, up, up. Now it's finally coming out, okay? But if he does, say, a shoulder press in this position, by the time he gets to this position, he has got impingement already. So when he goes through a press movement, he hasn't got enough of this rotation. He's gonna get some jamming, you know, and you might not feel it during, but after the shoulder press, that's when he feels the pain. That'll end up a tendonitis or a tendinopathy and then a tear and then it's game over. So coming down again what we've got to work on is his stability on this shoulder blade and he still works on his strength to stop that having get that better as, as time goes on I want you also watch on the way down what happens so if you go outwards again so it goes in comes out now when he comes down he loses a bit of control as well so if you come down for me you watch this right one see how it's crashing inwards there and it's just not looking as neat as the left one. So that's what we're going to work on. So here we are showing you what to do about this shoulder blade control to prevent these rotator cuff injuries when someone's returning to chest press and shoulder press. So remember, we need to get this shoulder stability a bit better, which means we need to work on some components, which is serratus. Okay, so under there we need to work on serratus. We need to work on a bit of lower trap to stop the and, and try and prevent the rhomboids doing too much work. And we need to work on a supraspinatus for his humeral head control to get this whole thing of shoulder stability and less impingement. So serratus stuff, I'm gonna bring it down to three things that is essential for him that he needs to revisit, that he used to be doing. He needs to revisit those to in order to get this whole thing better while he's returning to pressing. So, one arm against the wall for me, Kwan. So when you're doing a one arm press, the arm sits a little bit lower than the shoulder. So from that point there, he's gonna square up a little bit of an angle so he weight bears through the shoulder. He's gonna retract the shoulder 
So he goes forward, his shoulder goes backwards, so he goes into forward traction, and then he's got to push through the wall, push his body away, push that shoulder forward. Okay, so retract again for me. You're struggling a little bit with that today, yeah. And push forward. And this is why it's important to come back to this stuff because you sort of realize how hard it actually is to do this stuff. Can you see how he's sort of working quite hard here? He's not really retracting very well. He's using a lot of upper trap. So this is something that he's going to have to work on. He's a bit frustrated. <laughs> so drop into the wall for me, Kwan. There you go. So he needs to get that full retraction into here and then he needs to press away and push that shoulder forward. Let's come around here for me, Court. Have a look at this. So if you look at this, push that shoulder forward. Come, and when he pushes his shoulder forward, his body has got to really come away. There's his protraction. Remember, when he protracts like that, his serratus is going to work, which means it's going to get more stability. And the serratus is the one that's going to pull his shoulder blade out. When we saw that, when he was going in, he was losing that control of the serratus. If he does this work, will increase that strength, which will help him when he raises his arm it comes out with a little bit more. So that's a, such important exercise. The other one which will help him with his control is his lower trap. So one arm row for that. But when, when you do a one arm row, what we tend to do is, is we're doing this to get some retraction going, okay, and get his control going. Just face that way for me. Just do a one arm row for me. We're going out? No, we're going pulling backwards. Oh, pull. So pulling backwards first. So this one arm row one, now this is like doing lap pull down, right? come forward again. What he's got to focus on, get it to come forward, as he's got to pull this back first, so pull the shoulder blade back first, then as he pulls through, he can't let that move. So as you pull through, and then as he returns the arm, that's got to stay stationary, so he can't just let it go. Okay, so he's got to work on that control coming backwards. Now sometimes, if they're using too much upper trap, what you can do is pull down on an angle, which will get him a little, little bit more lower trap. So if we swap that, and then at the end, get him up here. Try that one. So now, if he starts up high, come forward. When he pulls back, he's going to pull down, which is depression, which is where that lower trap is. And then he's got to hold that down there and pull down. And here's the trick. He's got to keep that down and then the hand goes forward without that shoulder blade rising and then let the shoulder blade come forward. Okay, so he's really focusing on this eccentric control of that shoulder blade and not let it rotate forward. So another important one for him to work on and keep the band light so he can work on the form and technique. All right, and then the last one is a super spinatus. So we'll just get him working on. Okay. Back to here. Sorry, you're on. <laughs> Come into there. And then he faces me. Arm down to here. So at this point here, he's going to do abduction, right, which is what he needs. So from there, yeah. Now, the trick, come and have a look at this, cool, is we talked about how when he raises his arm out, right, his shoulder blade crashes inwards. So I would use the left arm here for him to monitor, making sure that he doesn't keep, the, let that shoulder blade come inwards. So he's got to keep that shoulder blade on his finger as he rotate, as he abducts his arm, so go outwards, and then down again. And he's only allowed to work, so just come straight, I'll go to here. He's got to externally rotate, that's it. And then come out to about 30 degrees. Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. yeah, there. And down again. Okay, so this is what he's got to focus on. So it's a very light band, and he's just got to work on control, not letting this fire up too much. He's got to keep this scapula from moving. It's got to stay stable as he moves from zero to 30 degrees. And that'll build up his control here, so then when he goes to shoulder press, he's got a better base of support, less impingement, and that's going to take some time. Okay.